Hello, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I am Larry Rhodes. And I am Ben Snyder, and we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you are not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, there are uh, free-thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and for those interested in uh, what it's like to live a life free of superstition and belief in God. This is a call-in show. However, we only have one phone line. So if you can't get through, we invite you to email your comments or questions to us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. But we do have a Twitter, a Twitter account, and you can tweet them to at FFTVNOX. That's FFTVKNOX. Mm -hmm. The Rationalists of East Tennessee uh, have monthly activities at the, uh, on the first and third uh, uh, Sunday mornings at uh, Mississippi State. Uh, they have lectures with lively roundtable discussions. Uh, on the second Sunday of the month, they have a book club, which meets at uh, Barnes & Noble, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And you, even if you haven't read the book, uh, or don't even own the book, uh, you are more than welcome to go there and uh, join in the conversation there. Even if you don't want to read the book, it's exactly. a good place to come you, because you can find out all about the book without reading and it. And decide whether or not you even want to read That's it. That's right. And the fourth Sunday is the Reflections Gathering, which is a potluck afternoon gathering at a member's home. Okay. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun meetup, often at a bar or restaurant. Tonight's meetup after the show is for happy hour uh, with food, drink, and conversation. Um, to find us, uh, look for the silver jacketed copy of The God Delusion standing upright on the table. Today is August 14th, 2012, and we'll be talking about the They Wouldn't Die for a Lie uh, fallacy in Christian argumentation. Yeah, let's talk about that just for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this uh, Christian apologetics going around when, uh, saying the apostles wouldn't die for a lie. The mm -hmm. Generally, anyone who would have seen Jesus' miracles, his acts, seen him resurrected. Or even the Christians in Rome being eaten by the lions, that type of thing, they wouldn't die for a lie. In other words, uh, Christianity has to be true because all these uh, people would not have died for a lie. Right. Now, we'll be debunking that because there is several situations where people would die for lies, and that's what we'll be talking about today. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you want to start with the second paragraph there. Oh, sure. And often you use modern argument, or actually, I think not. Is that the one? Mm hmm. Sorry. And often use modern argument for the truth of the resurrection of Jesus is that of martyrdom. The claim is that all of the apostles would have had first hand knowledge uh, as to whether or not Jesus actually returned from the dead and confirmed that he was the Son of God. Uh, as they died, rather than admit that the account was false, this suggests that rather than just believing that it was true like other martyrs of the faith, they knew it was a fact. true for a fact, right. right. There does seem to be something compelling to think that the disciples of Christ were so convinced of Jesus' divinity that they were willing to die for it. But when we look at this critically, we find that there are many reasons that people would die for something that isn't true. Mm -hmm. even if they knew that something was false. Mm -hmm. And there are many examples. Every year, hundreds of people confess to murders that mm -hmm. didn't, actually do, didn't actually do them. And their innocence is obvious to the police. They couldn't possibly have been there at the same time. These people uh, confess to murders all the time. They're mm -hmm. habitually uh, confessors. Uh, they had no access to the weapon. Uh, but knowing they would do this anyway, knowing that the, if they were found guilty and punished, that the punishment would be death. Mm -hmm. Why would they lie? Right. And uh, th we also have examples such as uh, in, war in the World Wars, specifically World War II, you had Hitler telling, uh, having his propaganda machine telling lies about the Jews all the time. 
and in, and put that greatly inspired the the Nazi soldiers in order to go out and fight these wars and die for their cause. Right. They believed in. They're dying strongly. for a, a lie that was propagated. To right. Them. Or in the case of the Japanese, they believe they were, they believe they had a, uh, their, that their emperor was in fact a god, and mm -hmm. that they were dying for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and this can be applied to even other religions, including Islam and the attack, you know, and the, the mm -hmm. fundamentalists who uh, fundamentalist extremists who attacked uh, uh, trade centers. Yeah, 9/11. 9/11. Mm -hmm. So think about it. You know, the, uh, was uh, the Japanese emperor actually a god? Mm -hmm. No. If you agree that it's no, then that was a lie. If you uh, think that Muhammad was not the prophet of God, that the Islamists did on 9-11, then they died for a lie. Um, what about Jim Jones? Uh, was it in uh, Jonestown? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Right. Uh, he, the, his teaching, would you say that his teachings were true? Uh, all of his followers died for the lie that he spread. Uh, the people in... Um, what is that? The spaceship cult that <laughs> the spaceship was following the uh, the comet through the galaxy mm -hmm. or through the solar system, right? And they all died. The Heaven's Gate cult. The, would you say that that was true, or that they died for a lie? So there are, there are an awful lot of reasons why this particular uh, apologetic, as it were, uh, w would not be correct. Let's let's define that word a little bit. Would you like to tell us what apologetics means? I'm it, sure there are some listeners that don't know what we're talking about. Apologetics is a term that means uh, defense, to defend a position, to defend a belief, defend an argument or statement. Uh, and specifically, this uh, this is uh, th what we're talking about today is an example of a Christian apologet uh, apologet uh, mm -hmm. apology, I should say. Mm -hmm. Uh, where they're trying to uh, defend the validity of Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're doing, we're basically taking a counter-apologetics stance on the show today. Mm -hmm. Counter-apologetics is a premise that people, uh, this particular counter-apologetics, mm -hmm. uh, would be that people throughout history have in fact died for unbelief or for beliefs which turned out to be false, deceptive, poorly understood, or even mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. For example, many thousands of Germans died during World War II based on the belief that they were the master race and were justified in conquering other nations for living space. Also, uh, w as we mentioned, uh, Japanese civ civilians committed suicide rather than being captured by the Americans. Oh, this is a different. different because path. of the false belief that they would be mistreated and tortured mm -hmm. by Americans. Right. Uh, there were many uh, propagandists claims on the side of the Japanese telling their troops do not be captured on any count mm -hmm. <coughs> because of evil treatment that the American soldiers would, would deliver to you. Right. In 1993, again, 76 people died in the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas because they believed that their leader, David Koresh, was a prophet of God, if not, in fact, Jesus being resurrected himself. Right. Um, Examples like the November, uh, September 11th attacks indicate people were willing to die for the beliefs. Um, if their beliefs were true, then the argument would imply that Islam is just as true or even more true than Christianity. Um, the apostles may very well have had first-hand knowledge, but that doesn't lend any credibility to the claim that, they, that we don't have first-hand knowledge about them or the claims. Mm -hmm. Any number of people can have first-hand knowledge of Spider-Man, as stated in his comics, but we still don't believe in Spider-Man's authenticity. Hmm. You want to continue with yeah, implicit? Oh, uh, implicit in the argument is the, is the idea that the miracles of Jesus actually happened, uh, and that there, and that uh, the argument therefore says that those who witnessed the miracles uh, would not have died, uh, would not have, uh, or would would have gladly died for that for that fact, that truth. Uh, of course, the problem is that uh, we do not have any really good reasons to believe that Jesus actually performed the miracles. Uh, for the only testimony we get to any of that is within the four Gospels, uh, and somewhat later in the rest of the New Testament. And even Paul, who was the first and the major contributor to Christianity, never, never mentioned any, anything about uh, Jesus' death. 
well, yeah, the resurrection. He just really, well, I think he does speak that, you know, there was a resurrection, but he does not speak of any Personal of the... Personal experience. Oh, you know, yeah, because Paul came along later in the, uh, in the formation of the church. But he does not ever mention any, uh, any stories of any of the miracles we find in the four Gospels. He does not acknowledge those as having any validity at all. And he is the earliest contributor contributor to the text of the Bible. And how early was his contribution after the death of Jesus? Uh, his writings, if I'm correct, were within the uh, 40s to 50s. 40 to 50 years AD. after? Well, not after. No, 40, uh, like the late 40s and the early, maybe late 50s of AD. Okay. So we're talking 10 to 20 years later, perhaps, uh, from okay. the time and that he, Jesus was And around. he doesn't mention the, the crucifixion? He, d he doesn't really go into much about uh, what exactly happened, like the Gospels do, for example. The Gospels actually... Right. You know, and they were written story. much later. Yeah, the earliest uh, one we have is Mark. Uh, that's written roughly around uh, 70 A.D. 70 years after the fact, or 50 oh, years no, after the fact? It's about 40 years after the fact. But again, then again, these are stories. They're incredible stories, and and uh, as Carl Sagan once said, uh, inc what was it? Incredible claims require incredible Ev oh, evidence. I'm trying to remember exactly how to put it. Yeah, extraordinary. Extraordinary claims, claims extraordinary require extraordinary evidence. evidence. Very good. So uh, these claims uh, need to be uh, backed up with modern uh, forensic evidence, if at all possible. Uh, just claiming that there's an empty tomb doesn't mean that the the contents of the tomb were emptied by resurrection. And you know, it, it, it would it wouldn't just I mean it, you know having solid evidence you know physical evidence would be nice. Mm -hmm. Right. But even if uh, even if, even if we didn't have that, what would be also be nice to have uh, co corroborating stories that tell the same tales, which we do not have in the right. Gospels or even in the rest of the New Testament. Right. There's several things that could have happened in this particular story. Mm -hmm. The apostles strongly believed the stories to be true, but they could have been mistaken. Uh, the ones who were killed never actually witnessed the events taking place themselves, but were told by other apostles whom they trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, they convinced themselves, possibly, that the stories were true, to the point of actually believing that they were true, even though what they witnessed directly contradicted them or that they may have remembered the details of the events differently than they witnessed false uh, because false details are cons constantly reinforced by everyone they kept company with mm -hmm. uh, they could have been fooled they they really did see the events but what they saw could have been a trick what's funny what strikes me is that whenever in, in the gospels themselves when Jesus comes back and presents himself mm -hmm. to the apostles they don't recognize him in some cases, yes, that is yeah, true. Well, in most cases, what well, I understand. Right. And that, and him saying, well, I'm Jesus Christ, uh, and convincing them even though, could have been a trick. You know, saying it could have been, his, say, his brother or another stranger, you know, mm -hmm. trying to keep the story alive after Jesus died. The apostles did not believe all of the stories, but they could have died for a different reason. Mm -hmm. They could have believed in the literal truth of John 3.16 and thought that they would not die. Or they may have considered the cause to be just, even though they knew some of the stories were embellished and exaggerated. They could have been protecting the lives of other people. They, uh, that it could have chosen death rather than to be exposed as liars. Uh, they may have been killed because they were public figureheads for the cause, not due to the specific stories may, they maintained or denied. They may have been killed without being given an opportunity to react to the stories. To retract. I'm sorry. Thank you. Retract their stories. They st or they could have stuck to their stories to maintain some dignity in their death as they were going to be killed either way. Mm -hmm. Or they may have intended to become martyrs. Mm -hmm. So there, there are several reasons right there that in this particular case that they could have died uh, for a lie. And in some of these cases, knowing that it was a lie. In other cases, they didn't know or thought it were tricked. You want to read three? Sure. The apostles admitted the stories were not true, but the admission was never made public. 
Uh, they did die protecting the truth, but the stories of those events were later embellished. The miracles we now read about are not what they actually saw and died for. The stories of the apostles' deaths were themselves later embellished to present them as martyrs. The apostles as well as Jesus died for something else. Perhaps they hoped they would help free Israel from the Romans. The apostles were never killed is also a possibility. Right. The <coughs> existence of the apostles was also an invention. Right. The um, entire story could have been whole cloth, you know, written by possibly. Um, Paul and his followers. Mm. Um, but we don't know. It's difficult to say. Right. Assuming that the Bible is true, Jesus didn't die. He was found alive some days after his crucifixion. Um, this is contrary to the account of the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> According to the Bible, Jesus did die and was resurrected, ergo creating a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. The Gospels say that Jesus died on the cross as a result of crucifixion. If that doesn't prove his death, being in a sil tomb for three days does. Furthermore, according to Gospel accounts and other accounts, upon Jesus' resurrection it is said that he had wounds but wasn't in a state of looking ill, as would be the result of his crucifixion and, and being in a tomb for three days. So if, if that were the case and he wasn't crucified, he certainly didn't die. Thus, Jesus had to die and resurrect, not just resuscitate. Still, the Gospels were all written at least a generation after the events stated that they allegedly took place, so we cannot be sure that the Gospel account is accurate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, lines are open, 215-2288. Uh, Please give us a call. We'll be happy to talk to you about these things. Uh, why would you think that people would not die for a lie? Um, if you do. We, if you do, uh, talk about some of the specific examples that we have. Um, we're more than happy to talk to you about it. <coughs> um, we have some uh, announcements, of course. Uh, Robert G. Ingersoll's birthday was three days ago on Saturday. Um, here's a viewer challenge. If you'd like to talk about any things we've talked about so far, uh, call in. If you just like to talk about Robert G. Ingersoll, uh, call in and tell us what your favorite Ingersoll passage was or work. Uh, one of the first things I ever read by Robert G. Ingersoll was uh, The Gods. Uh, uh, quite an eye-opening thing. He's also called the great agnostic. He was one of the greatest uh, atheist agnostics of his time. Uh, and we're talking 100 years ago, 150 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, after the Civil War. So this new atheism movement is not all that new. There have been atheists around since the beginning of religion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can tweet to us at, at FFTVNOX, uh, and we'd be happy to answer your tweets. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what do you think of the, uh, the stories in the Gospels' biggest flaw is as far as uh, people wanting to die for them or, or being, being a martyr? I would think that because the first martyr was Jesus himself. Um, if, if in fact he died on the cross, he was dying for the the religion, that, or the renovating the religion that he was working with. Mm -hmm. And the uh, <clears throat> the Jews uh, of the time thought that he was uh, going over the edge, going over the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Complain to Rome? It's, it's difficult to speak a lot about <coughs> that sort of thing. I think the apologetic uh, that uh, we've discussed is really, uh, it, it's really not that useful and it, uh, I don't think it requires uh, terribly much to debunk it. it uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's based on the assumption that uh, the only other explanation apart from being true is that uh, it was a lie. Uh, there are, of course, other explanations. It also assumes that everything in the, the New Testament occurred the way that the New Testament reports in mm -hmm. the Gospels, Paul's writings, and so forth. Uh, and it assumes that the Apostles, the Twelve specifically, because it's you know generally the people about whom this argument is made, um, really existed, actually died martyrs' deaths, and so forth, for which we don't really have much <coughs> to support mm -hmm. any of that. That it actually occurred. Um, 
I mean, I'd say that this, the, the severe uh, problems of the Bible itself, of the New Testament, I'd say especially, makes it difficult to um, really, uh, for, for, it makes it difficult for people to make the argument. Um, they, you know, it, I think it grows out of a kind of, um, it grows out of a kind of apologetic, I think I've heard, I, I think is C.S. Lewis's originally where he argues, you know, who was Jesus? Was he a liar, a lunatic, or a lord? And his base, it, it basically he argues that, he tries to argue that he, he couldn't have been a liar largely because of people dying uh, for the beliefs and for, mm -hmm. you know, and for Jesus <coughs> being willing to die without renouncing it. Mm -hmm. uh, also... But we've debunked that part of it right here. It, oh, we have a call. Okay. Welcome to Free Thought Forum. May we have a name or a nickname? Hello, this is Faithless Forest. I'm sorry I can't be there uh, with you guys today, but uh, I saw the joke, and I had me thinking. I read Bible, but I'm referring to your conversation that, that you're saying all. Forest, you're breaking up a little bit. Can you maybe find a, a little better spot? Yes. Okie dokie. Is this any better? Sounds better. All right. Well, um, in front of here, what you're saying is that some of the apostles were um, marked, and uh, so I read, I read it on my own, and I don't remember any of that. So, did I, or is that coming from some extra biblical source? I'm don't, sorry. I don't remember any of what. Yeah, uh, you're, you're still breaking up. You don't remember what coming from the Bible? Uh, stories of the apostles being martyred. Ah. Uh. Am I missing that? If, um, if, I read the Bible on my own, mm. or is this extra biblical? I think I think that uh, one of them is is claimed in I think the Book of Acts. I could be wrong actually. I can't remember that. But most of the apostles are not uh, their their fates are left uh, vague or unfinished uh, in the text. We don't really it doesn't the Bible's texts do not tell anything. It's it's an extra biblical thing. <coughs> Okay. Maybe they're talking I, about the Roman executions and uh, all the other persecutions on down the line. I mean, there are there were other I, stories I, of Christianity that didn't make it into the Bible that like told tales of like great apostles and great heroes of the faith that, and like ways they died and so forth. Like Peter, I've heard like you know, he was either I think either crucified upside down or crucified on a cross shape uh, on an X shaped cross. Okay, I've heard that. Andrew was crucified side faith and mm -hmm. the uh, cross stop is the side cross attributed to St. Andrew. Uh, mm -hmm. I read that book of uh, history of uh, flag and flag technology, nothing mm -hmm. to do with Christian theology. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I, that's the only thing I've ever read about um, other crucifixions. Mm -hmm. What's funny is we have a lot more evidence of the uh, cruise of the uh, executions by Christians themselves and the, like the holy wars and the uh, what's the the church Spanish Inquisition um, well, and things like that where uh, they took it on themselves to kill unbelievers and uh, or other killed, Christians right they also especially focused on heretics mm -hmm. right. uh, no witches but they, they claimed as a witch yeah sometimes all right, so I guess you've confirmed it. When I'm reading the Bible, I didn't miss some wholesale slaughter of the apostles. That this is extra biblical. Right. All righty. Well, I would encourage viewers to call in and tell us, you know, if they think that uh, people got proves that somehow what they believe was true. Mm -hmm. You know, what about the people who flew airplanes into the World Trade Center? Mm -hmm. Or what about um, people who, uh, the, um, the Buddhist monks who set themselves on fire in protest of the totalitarian government in Asia? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, uh, carry on on the show, and I uh, hope to see you at bar afterwards. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Horace. Bye, the lines are free at 22, I'm sorry, 215-2288. Uh, who would die for a lie is the question that we're, we're discussing today. Uh, we post we postponed in the news until uh, later on in the program so that we could get through all the points of uh, who would die for a lie. I guess we could get into that now if you'd like to.
Hmm? Uh, did, oh, you were talking about liar, lunatic, and lord. No. And we pretty much took care of the liar part. Well, you know, and so he argues that Jesus could not have been a liar because, because of, and of course he's assuming the, the trustworthiness of the Bible. And then you have the uh, lunatic part where he says, you know, Jesus wasn't, could have been a lunatic, uh, otherwise people wouldn't have followed him. Um, and, he, and he points out, you know, Jesus is very, seems to be very well spoken and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have Lord, which is, of course, the conclusion he supports. What he ignores is the possibility that this, that uh, the fourth L, because they're all L words, which is legend, that Jesus, the stories of Jesus and the apostles could be legendary. Mm -hmm. That there could have been actual people who did actual things, but that they've been embellished in a very like superstitious, maybe. supernatural way to make them look awesome. Like maybe compared. King Arthur or mm -hmm. um, Hercules, Robin Hood. Even Hercules, yeah. because we have very good reason to believe that someone actually existed mm -hmm. that they based it on. Right. He also, besides making a false trilogy <laughs> instead of a false dichotomy, mm -hmm. uh, he just said, if it's not this or this, it's boom, it's got to be that. And what he brought it down to is liar, which is secular. I mean, it's possible somebody's a liar. Mm -hmm. You could be a, luna a, le a lunatic. Which is entirely possible, mm -hmm. but the Lord requires a lot of supernatural elements to be posited in there, and, and right. supernatural elements of a particular religion. We have a caller. Right. Hello, caller. Can we get a name or nickname, please? May we have a name or nickname, please? Uh, William. 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 Hello. Welcome to Free Thought Forum. Do you have a comment or a question? Yes, uh, I I think. Uh, most of most of the things in, in the gospel, uh, I I think it's a, a lie. And, and what, for instance, for instance, uh, if if the, the, the gospel was talking about Jesus uh, going to the temple and turning over the the tables mm -hmm. and, and 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 getting upset. If mm -hmm. people would have done that in that time, that those temples were guarded by Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. If he would have attempted to do something like that, mm -hmm. he would have been killed right at the spot. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. And, and also, there's another part in the Bible where it talks about that he meets uh, a person that's possessed by a devil mm -hmm. or a demon, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he, and that the demon asked him if we can go to the swine. And then he said, okay, he says, you leave this body and you can go into the swine. Mm -hmm. The swine got possessed and they jumped over a cliff mm -hmm. to kill themselves. Right. Uh, I don't think it's something like that because at that time, people used swine as a means of support. And I don't think that that would be a lack of consideration mm -hmm. when to do something like that. Uh, also, there's a part of the whole thing. You're, you're breaking up quite a bit. You're breaking up quite a bit. Can you maybe try again? We, we just started missing the last thing you were saying. Excuse me? Uh, you, could you repeat the last thing you were saying because you started breaking up on the phone? Okay, about swine? Oh, we got that. Yeah, okay. Does that look part of the powerful? Hmm? The last part of the Bible? Yeah. Uh, there's an Old Testament. I think Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if, you, if you read this, the end of that chapter, mm -hmm. it talks about him coming down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but, but you never hear nothing about his son. Ah. So, to believe by a lot of experts, yeah, mm -hmm. he did sacrifice. But it, those yes. things to make it look pretty and for you to have a belief. There's a, specifically with the Abraham instance, I've, I've, I have heard of one of those um, experts you're referring to, scholar of the Old Testament, or Hebrew Scriptures, was pointing out that uh, the tale of Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac is actually a, is actually spliced together from two different sources because the uh, Pentateuch, the first five books of the Hebrew Scriptures, are written by five different authors. Oh, no, I'm sorry, by four different authors and a redactor, 
and that uh, Redactor being an editor, and that the books have been edited by these different people over the centuries. And one of the, in, in the case of this story, specific verses, uh, you know, it, it make it, from one source makes it sound like he did do the sacrifice and he's being blessed for it, whereas the other source ha in, it includes the the staying of the hand the with the knife, the introduction of the ram. And it's funny because the other source that has him returning down from the mountain alone, uh, the very next verse we find is that he took another wife named Keturah, uh, Abraham did, and she bore him many children. Hmm. And that same source never again mentions Isaac in any of the parts we have of uh, that source. In that particular ver version, uh, we have God demanding a human sacrifice and mm -hmm. accepting it, uh, like uh, General Jephthah. Mm -hmm. did Jephthah, the, yeah. Jephthah did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the temple, uh, it's it is interesting to point out that you know I don't know I don't know if they would have killed him because uh, at that even though it would have you know what he was doing was upsetting the the uh, religious uh, ceremonies. It, uh, Romans and Jews had a very difficult relationship. So they may have been a little more cautious than just arrested him, well, which is actually what I think the main explanation, uh, one of the main explanations for why Jesus is reported as later well, arrested and crucified. Wasn't he also at the time a kind of a leader of a of a band of rebels at the time? Well, not. I mean, that could have sparked a huge rebellion had they uh, mm. tried to protect the temple. Or yeah. Anyway, did, was that all you had to say? Uh, or did you have, did you have other something things else? you wanted to say? Yeah, I, also, I, I, I believe that sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we learn to be a lot first rather than the truth. Mm. We learn a lie first rather than the truth, is that what you said? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's easier to do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, particularly about these stories, though, is the cruelty involved. Uh, it, God demanding human sacrifice, even if it was just a test. It, it, it it's begs, an awful test. Yes, yeah, an awful test. Uh, think about the effect that just that test would have on that child. And then uh, the the even Jesus going to uh, the temple and driving out the money changers. He it says in the Bible he he left the scene, went and made a scourge. If you know what a scourge is, it's a terrible whip with many. Uh, flanges coming out of it that are embedded with sharp stones and, and, and hooks or pieces of metal and went back and scourged them mm. with that. This is Jesus meek and mild doing that? Mm, uh, no, not to me. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, inconsistencies right there. Well, I just want to say thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Come, Come down you. and join us at uh, post-show meetup at uh, Barley's Taproom P3. We'll be more than happy to talk to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank All you. Right. Well, thanks. Oh. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of eyewitnesses, how about the uh, Nigerian robber who turned into a goat? Oh, yeah. It's a recent uh, story out of Africa. That These are your tweets? There's a... Uh, there's a... There was an occurrence where some people, a couple of people were trying to break into a car. Witnesses claim that one escaped and the other one turned into a goat. So they're holding the goat uh, until he changes back. Uh, and they they're putting it on trial afterward. And it said, explain the word refactor and the evidence for the same. Oh, for the same? I don't know what... Uh, okay, redactor is actually the word, not refactor. Redactor. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it, uh, redactor simply means editor, one who moves the text around and so forth, and I think even it has his own writing in it. Uh, evidence for it? Uh, the evidence for it is that, uh, that I know of, uh, is that the, when, when, they, when, you, when the scholars have been looking at the Hebrew texts, they see that uh, the, the say, like for example, Genesis is comprised of different names for, for God. Uh, and also different uh, different forms of the language that are distinctive from certain centuries. Uh, so what they notice is that you know these these texts that have that are from a certain century, certain, uh, certain certain time frame, I should say, uh, calls Yahweh, uh, calls God Yahweh or calls God Elohim, 
or the other names, uh, and that they are talking about different things and that uh, uh, that are specific to them. They use language that's also specific to just the for that uh, it seems that writer, and they notice that uh, they, these. Uh, passages could not have been written at the same time because uh, the one uh, the, the set of passages from one author is uh, written without certain words and certain uh, even style of writing that uh, you, we find in other passages which are from much later. So that is uh, that is some of the, uh, some of the ways they know how uh, or how they know I should say that uh, the the Pentateuch were written by uh, four to five authors. Um, so, speaking I of, that, uh, I hope that answers the question we received. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Pentateuch uh, and Robert Ingersoll, if you get a chance to read the five mistakes of, uh, no, some mistakes of Moses, please do. It's an excellent write, and it's it, it takes the uh, Pentateuch and just rips it a new one. I think. Uh, We'll take a moment to go through the mid-program break. Mm -hmm. In case you're just turn, tuning in, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them and by individual contributions. Shows are live and most every Tuesday from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Community Access Television. You can also see it streaming online outside the Knoxville area by going to CTV. Knox.org. You can send us feedback at the email address on your screen, freethoughtforum at yahoo.com, or tweet them to at FFTV. Dot, uh, not dot, uh, FFTV Knox. But don't wait, this is a call in show, and we are live today, August 14, 2012, and viewers can call in now to the number on the screen. Uh, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, meets several times during the week. We have evening meetups for food, drink, and conversation. Uh, ASK's purpose is to supply a venue for community, camaraderie, and outreach to atheists, agnostics, freethinkers, and other like-minded persons in the East Tennessee area. Um, Sam, would you mind running the little information video? Uh, one moment, please. Oh, sorry. A little technical difficulty. Uh, the Rationalists of East Tennessee has Sunday activities involving lively presentations and discussion of subjects, topical and timeless. Once a month, they get together for a book club. Uh, you do not have to have read the book to attend, but it can help. Uh, and that's the second Sunday of every month at Barnes and Nobles. Um, and every fourth Sunday, they have a potluck meeting at a member's home. And for the first and third Sundays of the month, uh, they have lectures at uh, Pellissippi State campus. Both the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee help provide a social outlet where you'll find that if you don't believe in God, you're not alone. Are we ready with the video? What? Oh, okay. I guess we're not going to have a video. <coughs> Fair enough. Okay. We're going to continue to go on with the In the News segment of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, publisher pulls Jefferson book off the shelves over inaccuracies. David Barton's The Jefferson Lies uh, has been pulled off the shelf. Let me start again. It says, Nashville-based evangelical publisher Thomas Nelson is no longer shipping any copies to retail retailers of The Jefferson Lies by David Barton. Do you, have, do you have a graphic for that? And is recalling existing copies from brick and mortar retailers. <laughs> Says David Barton behind me. And his book. It also has requested online booksellers that they no longer sell the ebook version and has removed the book from its own website. The book is being sold on Amazon, although they do say that they will give store credit to those who want to return it. Uh, uh, also, they ha uh, they have requested that online sellers stop selling it, right? Uh, and are trying to recall the books, right? Uh, it's a best-selling uh, book about Thomas Jefferson by an influential Tea Party and evangelical figure, and has been recalled after the publisher announced on Thursday that it has detected factual inaccuracies in the book. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I say inaccuracies as a kindness. 
Barton argues that in the book that Jefferson was an orthodox evangelical and not an anti-Christian secularist. In addition to the book by Throckmorton and Coulter refuting <coughs> that claim with historical evidence that religious scholar Greg Foster wrote a piece, David Barton's Errors, that details the errors in the book and says that Barton's inability to write reliable history stretches beyond ideological cheerleading into outright incompetence. It is clear that it, the evangelical community is starting to see that David Barton for what he is, a propagandist who distorts the history for political and ideological purposes. Hmm. Um, TFN President Kathy Miller told Daily Kost, the question is now, will politicians and pundits who have promoted his views have the integrity to follow suit and repudiate Burton? Now, this so is my Barton. Barton, sorry. This is my comment. The book is aptly titled, with many stories cherry-picked from the right-wing fundamentalists of that day. In this week, Ask an Atheist, in this week's Ask an Atheist program out of Tacoma, Washington, they drew the parallel about the stories about Jefferson included in the book and the stories about Jesus in another book. That is, that they are wild tales to told by believers and accepted as truth down through the ages. The misinformation in this book was so egregious that even con conservative religious historians cried foul and demanded that the book be pulled. Mm -hmm. The publisher's errors were not in publishing religious falsehoods and misrepresentations. They do that all the time. The problem is with this book is that it contained testable and verifiable falsehoods and mis mis mm -hmm. misrepresentations. You had an in the news item, I believe, or two. Oh, sure. Uh, I think it's interesting to note with also Barton, the uh, Cincinnati uh, pastors and such and church leaders were threatening to boycott the publisher if they did not pull the uh, books from the shelves. They Which didn't is probably it. why it was pulled in the first place. Well, partially, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's interesting because a quote from Casey Francis Harrell, director of corporate communications for the Christian Publishing House, uh, says, because of these deficiencies, we decided that it was in the best interest of our readers to cease its publication and distribution. Uh, the uh, Publishing House received a lot of uh, uh, emails and so forth uh, complaining about the book and, to, and pointing out sufficiently that, that, that uh, it was, there was enough misinformation that needed to be removed. I had a question from the audience of, would Christians lie to get published? Uh, <clears throat> one of the questions I've always had was, uh, would you lie to bring someone closer to Christ? And there, there's, a, there's a whole apologetic behind that. But if you would, if you, I mean, it's a simple lie. It's, it's, it goes against the commandments, but uh, people do them all the time. Uh, would you lie to bring a person closer to Christ? I don't think most would. Well. If you would, think how much more so your preacher would. Then you have to wonder about how many lies he's telling you mm. to keep you close to, to Jesus. I think there are some pastors <clears throat> who do lie, but I think for the most part. I'm sure that some of them are, are genuine. And, well, I'd say most probably, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Uh, other, another news item. Uh, Missouri passed prayer, um, uh, prayer amendment, which is formally known as Amendment 2. Uh, the vote was on a ballot that read, uh, shall the Missouri Constitution be amended to ensure uh, three things. One, that the right of Missouri citizens to express their religious beliefs shall not be infringed. Two, that school children have the right to pray and acknowledge God voluntarily in their schools. And three, that all public schools shall display the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. Uh, it's it's an interesting uh, situation because uh, personally I don't have any problem with any of those three things, uh, <clears throat> but as l a lot of other people have pointed out, it seems like especially the first two are redundant considering that our federal bill of rights, you know, freedom covers of speech mm -hmm. cover, uh, covers freedom of speech and expression, and I see nothing in this that really goes <clears throat> against our current rules on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but if you if you think that it's already covered by the Constitution as as freedom of speech, mm -hmm. then why would they why would they bring this to the floor of, of the government uh, for vote? I can see you. you know, I can consider one good reason I, uh, why they might, which is that they wanted to uh, make the Missouri Constitution more closely related to 
the United States Constitution. And, you know, I can kind of understand that, especially if something goes wrong in our federal level, that they would still have that on their books, at least, which is fine. Uh, what's troubling is that some of the, is that a great uh, many of the proponents seem to think that this is required in order to protect Christians specifically, which is odd because Christians are not the only ones <laughs> who pray, for one thing, and also because uh, Christians are already protected uh, with regard to what they can do. And one of the people defending this uh, amendment even said that you know ever since they lost prayer, they lost mandatory prayer in schools, they've been feeling you know slighted in some way. And that this is required to make them feel better, you might say, <coughs> to know that it's not going to get worse for them. And we have to point out <coughs> that he does mean mandatory prayer in school. Right, teacher They have led. lost the right to, to make, the teachers have lost the right to mm -hmm. make the children pray to their particular God. Right, which Or any God particular that may God. Be. Right. Right. Uh, prayer is still going on in school, in school, and uh, there's an old saying, as long as they have tests, there will always be prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, a person can pray in his mind, at his mm -hmm. desk, and in the hallway, at his uh, they cannot have a government paid official uh, mandating prayer, which is all that's been taken out of the school. Right, which people may not realize teachers are government paid right. officials. How many times have you heard people say, say that uh, God has been taken out of school? No. Right. Government enforced prayer has mm -hmm. been taken out of school. Right, to where your child is not forced to pray to a God that you may right. not approve, mm -hmm. uh, or that they and, may not approve. And that actually protects all religions. Yeah, it protects everyone who has religion, who doesn't have religion, who's a theist, atheist, Muslim, Jew, Christian, right. whatever you are, Hindu, right. Sikh, mm -hmm. you know. Imagine uh, your child coming home from school one day and, and saying that your, their teacher had told them to praise Allah mm -hmm. and praise Muhammad, and they told them also that Jesus was not a prophet, mm -hmm. and, and they needed to learn this song uh, saying so. Well, that is government-mandated prayer. It's not Christian prayer, but it is prayer. And if you pass laws to make government-mandated prayer legal, then you may have to face that in the future. Not only Islamic, but Hindu or any other kind of prayer that, that could be brought into your school by a, by a duly authorized government representative, like a teacher, counselor, principal. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Phone lines are open, 215-2288. Um, if you'd like to discuss this or any other topic, mm -hmm. just give us a call. You can also tweet us at at FFTVNOX. Mm -hmm. Did you have another in the news item? Oh, no, I think that's a good. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. But uh, I, I, think, I think, again, back on the original topic of the show, uh, when it comes to an apologe uh, apologetic such as, you know, people demanding to know why I would like, why they think, they seem to think we believe that the apostles died for something that was, that they knew was false. Um, I think, I think people are just not aware enough of, um, you know, what, it, uh, they're not aware enough of the, of the uh, unreliability of the Bible with regard to its fact claims. A lot of people accept it simply on face value. They think it's uh, uh, simply true and refuse to believe anything else. Um, oh. okay. Hello, caller. May we have a name or a nickname, please? Caller? Uh, you can call me William. William? Welcome. Uh, different William, different William. Okay, fair okay. enough. William, too. Uh, yes. What can we do for you today? Um, well, I was listening to the show, and I missed the very beginning, and it's, um, the subject is, would Christians die for a lie? Ah. And um, are we discussing, like, if, uh, if Christians kind of uh, realize that there were not literal truths in the Bible, or, like, um, basically, would they still die by their... We're really talking about... philosophy, or if they... Uh, we're really talking about the Christian apologetic... Uh, that is generally brought up in debates. Uh, who would die for a lie? You say it was, who was it? William Lane Craig that brought it up? Oh, with? no. Uh, I'm not sure that there's any professional apologist that really uh, okay. uses this terribly much. He may. Hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it's a common uh, enough of a thing to hear from a Christian who hears that I think that, you know, that it's not true at all what, what the Bible says about Jesus or the apostles. And they then, and they would then say to someone like myself that, well, you think they died knowing that it, it was died for it, knowing that it wasn't true, and so that's really what uh, the, the the 
basis of that question on the screen is. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So mm -hmm. basically, it's like, it's basically, well, uh, yeah, the logic is that uh, other people have died for this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, there has to be something, in, so much effort invested into it that it can't all be alive. Right, right. And we, we went over several uh, different bullet points earlier in the show about why, indeed, people do uh, die for lies all the time. Uh, or it could at be. Least they, but general, but I think I think you know perhaps a difference between a lot of things listed. For example, we listed you know people who died for uh, Hitler's lies, died for other people's lies. I think uh, it's fair to point out that there is a slight difference, especially if we're talking about the apostles uh, in the Bible, uh, that they would have personally experienced the things that they were dying for, versus you know the Nazis yeah. and so forth. Probably or they just, just could be. They could be stories. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, I mean, when I was, I was raised Christian, and I uh, I grew out of it, ah. and um, people like you know when I was you know being raised, and I'm just like, you know God turn you know Jesus can turn water into wine. I always mm -hmm. thought, well maybe that's just kind of a metaphor for that he was so charismatic that ah. even if there was a party and they didn't have any alcohol, mm -hmm. he was just so fun that everybody, you know, it was as good of a part as as a party that had. Ah, that's a lot interesting. Of, uh, look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, uh -huh. and um. I don't, I don't think a person who would view it that way would die for it, whereas a yeah. literalist uh, would. And you all were discussing earlier about um, basically kind of people who believe, kind of self-hypnotize into believing. Like mm -hmm. um, I had a friend who, uh, when he was a uh, kid, had an asthma attack. Mm -hmm. And he swears up and down that, you know, uh, he was lying on the ground and he, you know, felt the hands of his family, you know, mm -hmm. trying to support him, you know, through the uh, asthma attack. And he swear he felt the hand of God on his chest, like, uh, you know, doing whatever. And, I mean, he swear to God by it. And, if, like, he buried the out, then he would probably die for his beliefs. And he, to him, it's not, not a lie, mm -hmm. is the problem. And uh, right. he's very, he believes very literally in the Bible. Yes. So, uh, I don't think all Christians would, you know, die for something like that. It's mm -hmm. just... The people who uh, treat religion more as a tool, or people who treat religion as a literal divine truth. Yes, I think uh, that makes I got off sense. On a tangent there. That's, oh, that's all right. No, that's fine. Uh, I don't have trouble believing that Jesus was a, a charismatic, uh, wandering uh, preacher of the time, or wandering teacher. Uh, there could have been a lot of stories uh, written about uh, his his journeys and the people he talked to and the things he did. Mm -hmm. But many of these stories weren't written until 20, 30, 40 years later after he died. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, you know, you have Muhammad, like, wrote everything. Yeah. And, well, uh, in this everything directly. Like, yeah. he's uh, right. all kind of a uh, word of mouth type thing. Well, in right. this particular case, you have people who want to try to blow him up, blow up his reputation uh, and, and embellish on the, the things that he did. And mm -hmm. if anybody's played a game of telegraph, telephone, Chinese whispers, you know how that happens. And to take all of these tales as literal truth is, is way beyond the, the, plus, s the scope. Plus, of you can also look at other uh, non-canonical gospels and letters and such written during that time period that no Christian today, or at least few Christians today, I should say, because there are some who do, uh, take it take those seriously. And yet they are like, for example, the, I think it's the uh, the Gospel of Peter actually has the tale of Jesus exiting the tomb, and he's and he's. And like there's a walking, talking cross coming out of the tomb with him. I mean, you know, that was written around the same time, and people believed in that and to and accepted that book. And yet, you know, people expect us to, you know, take the books. Uh, this is the Bible here, by the way, that I'm touching. Uh, take take the rest of these books that are that they've got ha that were handpicked of going this in the Bible uh, more seriously than that. One. It's all about. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead, I'm good. Go. I was going to say, like, um, kind of say an interesting parallel, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, people watch Twin Tower too, uh, watch kind of editorial shows that express themselves like facts, mm -hmm. and they'll believe that is a truth when it's more of a, you know, distorted view of the express so strong that it looks like, you know, truth because the person mm -hmm. seems to they have much conviction for it. Right. So it's like, uh, like even, you know, now it's easy to see how, like, a philosophy or a, um, mm -hmm. kind of a 
this political view mm -hmm. uh, that was expressed so strongly uh, to end up kind of morphing into something much bigger. Yes. Hmm. So that's pretty much all I got. Uh, thanks okay. for uh, hosting us today. Oh, not a problem. Thank you for calling in. Um, you're more than welcome to join us at Barley's after the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Okay, oh, well, great. excellent. Very good. All right. Take care. Okay, phone lines are open again. Mm -hmm. uh, we use many examples one, during the show about uh, people who did die for a lie, like the people who were in Heaven's Gate, uh, Jim Jones and Jonestown, his followers dying for his lies, uh, Waco, Texas. Uh, just and these are people who have fallen for propaganda um, there are other people who actually die knowing that it's a lie the people who uh, confess to murders um, police all the time are reporting that they have a murder it's unsolved and people will show up and confess for it to it knowing that they in fact did not uh, do it but are willing to die for that lie Got time for one more call. It's about three and a half minutes in the show. 215 2288. Pick up the phone, call us. Mm. So. Do you have anything left to add toward the end of the show? Mm. Uh, I think, I'm trying to think what it was the last caller was talking about. He said uh, something to the effect of, you know, people like his friend, you know, they believe it so much that they cannot. Uh, get away from it, it seems that they, they would die for it, uh, for it being true. Okay, oh, we, 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 we have, have a, a tweet, apparently. Regarding the Missouri law, uh, who do viewers think is competent to compose and, and lead, lead the children of others? Mm, that's an excellent question. Good question. Uh, I guess the unspoken part of is in religion or in faith? Right, lead them in what? Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, but what it, you know, in the case of people like your friend, uh, like the friend of the uh, last caller, it it is difficult uh, dealing with uh, certain people who just no matter what you say, I mean, because uh, it's it's fascinating. There are some people who no matter what you say to them, no matter what you show them in the Bible, no matter how much convincing evidence you have opposed to what they believe about the Bible, it's more so the literalists. Uh, and fundamentalists, they will not change their minds, and they will simply continue going back to saying, "This is uh, this is the one book I need to read. I don't need to read these other books. I just need to read this one." I've met quite a few now uh, who take that stance, and it's mind-boggling that they think that yeah, you know, they don't, and they make it clear they don't even want to read the views of other people who have different views. Uh, that they want to avoid that. Uh, such is the fear of hell that you you think that if you open your mind even for a minute to the to the doubts that would obviously creep in when you read some of these stories about whether they're true or not, the veracity of these stories, but you think that doubting them will send you to an eternity of hell. That that's pretty powerful stuff. At the same time, what kind of uh, good loving God would do something like that? That's right. it's love uh, Christians ask me, say well, what are you going to tell God when you show up and, and if you show up at the pearly gates? I'll say, well, I'd tell him I stuck up to, for him oh. because I didn't think that the stuff we in the Bible represents him. We have a call. Uh, we only have about a minute left. Hello, caller. Yeah, thank you for letting me call. Sure. Um, my very, name is Bob. Very and quickly. That, okay. Uh, very good. Yes, I would die for this concept that y'all are exposing mm -hmm. and that what is important, though, is that what I've learned Mm -hmm. After studying all the religions, every mm -hmm. one that I could, okay. that I am uh, convinced that uh, there is a greater truth that's been recognized for thousands of years, mm -hmm. and I am in no way intelligent enough to think that I am greater in those thinking than not. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I have no other evidence than that which has let my spirit sleep in. Okay. Well, uh, I'm we got to sorry, we're gonna have to let we've you got to let you go, but you're more than welcome to call in. I'd like to talk with you more about that, and I'd like to invite you if you'd like. Uh, right after the show, you can come down to Barley's Tap Room Pizzeria and talk with us and other people about this. But right. for now, we've got to close. Thank you for calling. Yes, this has been Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Please send us feedback. Leave voicemail at eight six five two seven two nine zero six zero. 
Uh, you can see this show on Tuesdays from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock Eastern mm -hmm. Standard Time. Send our thanks to Sam and Forrest and, and Jonas. Uh, remember, examine your beliefs.